In this video, we will cover the settings you can use to fine-tune RS1 on your machine. After you've calibrated steering, you may need to adjust some things depending on operating conditions. Some examples could be operating in rougher terrain or driving at a slower speed. Most of these settings will be on the home screen of the steering object pool, but you will want to dial in the minimum wheel control effort first. To get there, go into the Tools menu, select the Steering Setup tab, and then select Wheel Control Setup. Here you can see the percentages for controlling the slowest and fastest wheel movements. What you will want to do on this screen is adjust the minimum numbers so each side will show an average wheel velocity of about 1 degree per second when you press the Min button. You may not need to adjust the maxes from where they are after a calibration, but you can increase them if the machine is turning too slowly and they are not already at 100%. Now go back to the home screen to see the main settings. You will want to adjust the response speed first, and there is a reason for this. You just fine-tuned the wheel control effort, so now you will want to adjust how quickly the wheels will respond when on the line. This can be thought of as a comfort setting, since you can feel the effects of wheel movement in the cab. You will want this number around 10 points below what you feel is too much wheel movement. The wheels might twitch aggressively if the number is too high, and they might slowly weave if the number is too low. Also, travel speed can affect how the wheels move when on the line. If you drive at slower speeds, you may need to lower this number. Now we can move on to the two main navigation settings, Sensitivity and Line Acquire. Sensitivity controls the overall steering sensitivity, especially with online steering. Raise it if the machine hangs off the guidance line. Lower it if the machine constantly moves back and forth across the line. Line Acquire controls how the machine will approach the line. It will basically determine how soon the machine will start pointing in the direction of the line. A lower number will start turning from farther away, and a higher number will wait to turn until closer to the line. Raise it if the machine is lazy in getting to the line. Lower it if the machine is overshooting the line. If you don't like the feel of how the machine acquires the line, you may want to adjust another setting called Max G-Force. You can find this setting back in the Tools menu under Steering Setup, and then select the Advanced Tuning menu. We do not recommend making any changes to most of these settings, but Max G-Force is an exception. This is another comfort setting, and it will limit the sharpest turn the machine can make. Use a higher number if you want to make a sharper turn to the line, and use a lower number if you want to make a more gradual turn. Just like with response speed, travel speed has an impact on the machine when it makes a turn. A higher travel speed will create a higher amount of force in a turn, so you may need to use a higher max g-force number. After you get max g-force dialed in, you may need to readjust line acquire slightly. You can save two different gain presets, which will store the settings on both the main run screen and the advanced tuning menu. All of the changes I just made are now stored in preset 1. Use the preset button on the right to switch to preset 2, and then you can make changes to this preset. You can use this feature to save the settings you would use for, say, flat fields versus rough fields, or for different travel speeds. You can also use these presets to save different wheel control calibrations. If you ever need to reset these numbers, select Reset Calibrated Gains. This will reset everything back to the last time the system was calibrated.